Hey, this is Joe Lorenzi here. We are filming today a, um, a little tutorial on how to make temporary crowns for temporary bridges actually. This is, this is more complex than making single crowns because we've got multiple margins to worry about as well as embrasures. So we're going to do a demonstration on a model which is a lot tougher than doing it in the mouth because we don't have as visible a margin on this as, in, as it is in the mouth. But we're going to try. At least you could, there'll be a lot of things that are applicable if it's not exactly as nice as in the mouth. But let's go. Let's give it a whirl. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is we're going to mix some acrylic. Now, there's different ways. Okay, yeah, I don't care what you, whether you focus, focus on this is fine. Now, there's different ways of doing this. There's the salt and pepper technique where you're placing the powder and the liquid directly into this model, into this, uh, excuse me, this, this impression. Uh, I, I like to do it in a mixing dish. I just think it's faster, but both ways can work. Are we back? Yep. Okay. Now try to look in here, Gina, just so you can see the, can you see the liquid in there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Here's, a, here's the fast way to determine the right amount of powder. I place the powder in here, and I've got way too much liquid in here, but what the heck. I'm going to let the powder fall to the bottom of the liquid so that all the particles get wet. And when it starts to accumulate on the surface, then you're pretty much ready. It's nice and flowable, and that's fine because you want it to flow in here. Now, I forgot to put some Vaseline on here. I'm going to quickly put some Vaseline here so it doesn't get stuck too much. I'm expecting it to get stuck some, obviously, in the mouth. You would do this only if you had some kind of a, of a base, um, a composite resin buildup on it. Alright, so now I've got my, my acrylic and it's nice and pourable. Pour it in, try to figure out about how much you're going to need, depending upon how big that pontic space is. You might want to add a little bit more to make sure it totally covers that space. You don't have to put it in the patient's mouth immediately because I wanted it to be nice and runny so that it poured in here without any bubbles, but I don't need to put it in the patient's mouth. I'm waiting actually for this to get a little, lose its gloss, just get a little doughier so it doesn't run out of here so much. I'm going to just still hold, waiting, waiting. All right, that's feeling good. Now I'm going to put it just like I would place it in the patient's mouth, making sure it's indexed correctly, have the patient bite down into it. There we go. And they bite down and the stuff squishes out just like it would squish out in their mouths. Just like in their mouths, you can, you can remove some of this excess just because the more excess you have, the more likely it is it's going to lock in someplace. Now I apologize for this red stuff is going to, the red wax is going to color the, uh, the temporary, but it's just this an easy way to keep it from locking in. Okay. Now, if that was a live patient, you would now be taking a saliva ejector and holding it near their mouth to, to just get the fumes out you might be also suctioning up some liquid, but this stuff really stinks. So if you put the saliva ejector just nearby, it just wafts away some of the vapors. Now we're going to just keep monitor this now and see how the set is extra orally. This will give us some idea of how set this is in the patient's mouth. And this is really important because this stuff gets really hot, especially in large quantities. So you want to, you have a a little contest you're running here. If you take it out too late, it's going to get hot and burn the patient. If you take it out too soon, it's going to distort, and then you're going to be kind of back to where you started from. Oh boy, this is really stinky. So, um, when in doubt, take it out sooner rather than later. Now I'm just playing with this. Notice it's starting to get to the rubbery point where when I bend it, it's coming back to where it was before. But if I push my finger in, it's still way soft. So if I took it out now, it would uh, definitely distort. 
Now again, remember in the patient's mouth, it's going to be setting faster because the heat in the patient's mouth is going to make it set faster. So again, you have to kind of err on the side of caution. I would rather you take it out too soon and then have to redo it because it got messed up than you waited too long and it burned the patient or it locked on and you couldn't get it off. You could always redo it, but if you hurt the patient, then, then we've really scored a negative. All right, so I'm looking at this. Not feeling any heat generating here yet. If I put my fingernail in, I see a print, but it doesn't really bounce back fully. So this still would distort big time. I'm going to wait a little longer. It's fun to play with, though. It's like a finger. Boing, 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 boing. Ooh, starting to feel a little bit of heat here. Now, if I was, this was a real patient, I would double check my setting time. I'd go in the mouth, and there's always some place where it's visible, and I'd kind of poke it. Because this is a room temperature thing, it's going to set at the same time here. But in the mouth, I might feel, oh, that's feeling, starting to feel set, and I'd have them open up. Let's check it again. And starting to get a little heat here. Here, Gene, I'll give you a piece to play with so you can feel it too. Mm -hmm. Starting to feel that heat a little bit. Mm -hmm. Have you ever felt the stuff really get hot? Yeah. Okay, so you know what it's like. Yeah. It's super hot. Now, the more liquidy that you make this stuff when you make the original mix, the slower the set. So if I'm in a hurry, I will um, make a thicker mix. If I've got a big bridge, I'm going to make it thinner because I need more time. Oh, now definitely starting to get some warmth here. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Still distorting though. Ooh, just about right. Starting to feel that heat. Mouth too long it'll burn. That's right. That heat will burn. It's it will chemically burn, but mm -hmm. all right. And we got some distortion still. Okay, now I have a big void in here where I didn't place enough material. So I might as well go through the reline process too. Now this is rubbery, but if I tried to take it out now, it would distort big time. So I'm going to just, um, I'm just going to let this cure all the way here, and then we're going to do a reline, and I'll show you how we do the reline. Okay, so let's hit pause there for now.